Hello and welcome to my video. I'm so excited today. We're going to do a 1920s inspired makeup look and let's jump right in. Now I'm starting out with the e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer. This is primarily to fill in little fine lines under my eyes and around my face and fill in pores. It goes on top of your skincare and underneath your foundation. And I really wanted to keep things very easy for myself today, so I'm going to use my Saint Cream Makeup just because it's all right there and easy to dip in different colors for myself. Now, I don't sell this makeup, but I did want to talk about it for a minute because I know there are probably some people that are very curious about it. I think we've all seen those videos where somebody is sitting in their car putting on their makeup and they have this palette and it just looks so simple and they're talking about how it's perfect for mature skin. And honestly, the reason that this came to mind for me is that the other day I was in such a rush. I was on my way to my mom's house. She lives about 30 minutes away. And I thought, oh my gosh, I don't even have time to put on makeup. I'm going to have to do it when I get there. So I grabbed the easiest things that I had in my makeup. And that palette was one of them because it's got all the colors right there. So as far as being convenient and easy for having everything, you know, right in front of you, it's great. Now, cream makeup is heavier than your traditional makeup, so you are going to place all of your colors basically where you want them to be and then blend them rather than place layer upon layer. Now, if we were back in the 20s, we would be applying this completely differently. In fact, we would just be using a face powder. And we'll talk more about that in just a moment, but I want to tell you about today's video sponsor, which is June's Journey. June's Journey is a fun and free-to-download hidden object game set in the Roaring Twenties. A murder has happened, and you are needed to collect the clues to help solve it. On top of that, you'll be able to decorate your gorgeous estate where your own manor is standing. Download the game through the link in my description to play it right on Facebook or on your mobile devices. I love finding all the little retro objects in the game, and I've even learned a few new words, like what's a candelabra, and when was the last time you saw a bellows? Now, remember when I said that the face powder was actually applied as the base? So that would have been their foundation, and it would have been applied usually with a powder puff, and they would have rubbed it into their skin to create a base rather than patting it on. Fast forward to 2023, and... One of the burning questions people have about cream makeup is, will it crease? Will it settle into my fine lines and my pores? And the answer in a nutshell is, yes, of course it will. It's makeup. If the makeup is applied too heavily, it will absolutely crease up. And sometimes, even if it's applied lightly, it will crease up. They do, however, make an outstanding setting powder that'll keep everything in place. Now, to hold my eyeshadow in place and keep it from creasing up, I'm going to apply a little bit of setting spray to my sponge and apply it to my eyes. Once that's done, I'm going to take the same color as my natural skin tone and apply it over my lid. Then one by one, I'm going to take a slightly darker color and apply it to my lid, creating sort of a gradient look. I'm going to do a medium smoky eye, but what most of us conjure up for a 1920s look, especially an evening look for a film star flapper, would be a very dark smoky eye. Now the brush I'm using is a dual-ended brush called the Blur Brush. It's really not an eyeshadow brush per se, it's more for detailed contouring, but I love this brush and I want to use it for my eyeshadow. Normally it does a beautiful job, however I just washed my brushes and I did not give them enough time to properly dry, so I'm getting some odd looking streaks in my shadow. Not to worry, I'm going to show you how to fix this. If your eyeshadow ends up streaky for any reason, just spray your brush with some setting spray, work it through the back of your hand to work off the excess, then go to your eyeshadow and blend. Setting spray is wonderful stuff. It's one of my favorite, favorite tools to use because it will not only help you thin out your makeup and blend it, but it'll also remove makeup and hold makeup in place as well. Let's move on to lips. The lip shape most associated with 1920s makeup is the Cupid's bow. This was created by drawing a curvy bow shape on the upper lip, even going outside the natural lip line. Likewise, lipstick was applied to the middle part of the lower lip. This created a rounded, dolly-like mouth. Other lip shapes were also seen in the 1920s, 
all of which concentrated on the middle part of the lip. Lipstick was never applied to create a full mouth at the corners because that was considered to be vulgar. By the way, if you're enjoying this video or gaining any kind of value from it, please hit the like and subscribe button. And if you're curious about the products that I'm using in the video, make sure to check either the description or the top pinned comment. And as always, if you have a question, please ask. Now I'm going to finish up these lips and try not to make them too vulgar. And then we're going to move on to some eyebrows. Since I'm going to be doing an unnatural brow for me, I wanted to use my brow buddy to just help me figure out where my starting marks, where my arch and my ending marks would go. In the 1920s, long, thin eyebrows were fashionable. Brows were often plucked and shaped to a smooth curve or they could be left fairly straight. However, the average woman did not pluck her eyebrows as thin as the movie stars. Rather, they would use a little dab of Vaseline to condition and smooth their brows down rather than to pencil them in. And on my own brow, what I'm trying to do is create a semi-skinny brow, and I'm trying to incorporate the little brow hairs that are there with the line that I drew. Normally, I would underline my brows with a little bit of concealer, but that just wasn't enough, so I had to use that white crayon, which is just a highlighter pencil by Wet n Wild. Next up, eyelashes. I have skipped using an eyelash curler, but I did want to tell you that Curlash produced the first eyelash curler in 1923. Eyelash makeup came in liquid, paste, and cake form. The solid cake blocks came with a flat application brush, and ladies would spit onto the block and rub it around with a brush before applying the resulting liquid to the lashes. And then they could use that on their eyebrows as well. I don't have much for lashes, so I'm going to cheat and get that big lash look with false lashes. First, we're going to apply the glue, and while that's drying, we're going to work the lash band to make sure that it's flexible. Then we're going to add a tiny bit of glue to the lash band itself and allow it to dry. And then we're just going to pop it on. It works just like contact glue if you allow both sides to dry. Once those are on, we're going to grab that same wet and wild crayon from earlier and apply it to that lower lash line. And then that's just going to make the eye pop and look a little bigger. I personally feel like the finishing touches really bring these kind of looks home, but I can't wait to hear what your thoughts are. Don't forget to download June's Journey today and help solve the murder mystery. Get the download link in the description and the top pinned comment. I hope you enjoyed my 1920s style flapper girl rendition inspired by June's Journey. <laughs> Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. This was so much fun. I hope you enjoyed yourself and I'm going to go relax now. <laughs>